أبدأ بالحمد مصليا على محمد خير نبي نرسلا وذي من أقسام الحديث عدة وكل واحد أتى وحده أولها الصحيح وهو ما اتصل إسناده ولم يشذ أو يعذب ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يبرم فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار عباد الله أوصي ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل حيث قال عز وجل في محكم تنزيل ولقد وصينا الذين ولقد وصينا الذين اوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم واياكم ان اتقوا الله بفيز الله سبحانه وتعالى ان يسن سلام لكم بلبد مسجد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واسك الله سبحانه وتعالى to bless this day of Jumu'ah of ours that we have gathered in the house from the house of Allah سبحانه وتعالى روى الامام البخاري ومسلم في صحيحيهما عن طريق بن عن طارق بن شهاب انه قال جاء رجل من اليهود الى عمر بن الخطاب فقال يا امير المؤمنين انكم تقرؤون ايه في كتابكم لو علينا معشر اليهود نزلت لاتخذنا ذلك اليوم عيدا فقال اي ايه فقال اليوم اكملت لكم دينكم واتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الاسلام دينا الحديث امام البخاري مسلم ريبورت ان ذا صحيح ان اوثورتي اوف طارق ابن شهاب ذا يهود ا جيوش مان كيم تو امير المؤمنين عمر بن الخطاب ان يسيتهم او ليدر اوف ذا بيليفرز يو ريسايت ان ايه ان يور بوك If this was revealed to us the Yahud would have taken that day as a yawm of Eid as a day of Eid So Umar ibn Khattab he said which ayah are you talking about He said the ayah in surah Al Imran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says al yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum today this I've perfected your religion wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radiitu lakum al-islam deena and I have completed my favor upon you all believers or Muslims وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا And I am pleased, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking فوق سبع سماوات I am pleased with you, O Muslims, with the religion of Islam So Umar ibn Khattab said, Wallahi by Allah I know when this ayah was revealed And the hadith goes on My dear respected brothers and sisters In this ayah is a huge lesson for every single one of us to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen and is pleased with the religion of Islam. There is no need for any other religion on the face of this earth, or there is no religion which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with other than the religion of Islam. And there isn't a prophet whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent to perfect and complete this religion of Islam other than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there isn't any need for any person to look anywhere else to find a guidance rather than the religion of Islam. I want to ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, are you pleased with the religion of Islam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with this religion to be your religion? 
This is the question that we need to ask ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters, because we find a lot of differences, we find a lot of answers within ourselves when we sit down and ask this, this question to ourselves. The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith in authority of Abu Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu anhu. He said, Ya Sa'id, Ya Abu Sa'id, O Abu Sa'id, Man radiya billahi rabba. Whoever is pleased with Allah as the Lord, Wabin Islam Dina, and the religion of Al Islam as the religion, Wabi Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabiya. And the one who is pleased with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu as the Prophet, Wajabat lahu jannah The jannah, the paradise in which we are working towards, Allah has made it obligatory upon him that he will enter it. In another narration, which is reported by Al-Qabarani, and authenticated by Imam Al-Bani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, the Prophet sallallahu he said, Man qala, whoever reads, whoever says, every single morning, he says the following statements. Raditu billahi rabban. I am pleased with my Lord as my, I'm pleased with Allah as my Lord. Wabin Islam Dina and my Islam and the Islam as my religion. Wabin Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as the Messenger as the Prophet of Allah. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Anazimu. I guarantee him. La aakhudan biyadi. I will take him by my hand. Hatta. The Prophet ﷺ said, I guarantee that person that I will take him by my hand and enter him into Jannah. Subhanallah. How great are these statements? For someone who says these following statements every morning, the Prophet ﷺ has said, I guarantee him that I will take him by, by my hand and enter him into Jannah. But do you think it is as easy as that? Kalla. Imam al Bukhayim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said in Madarij al Salikin, he said, Man jum man ijtama'at, hadihi al umur. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combines these affairs, meaning pleased with Allah as his Lord, and the Islam as the religion, and the Prophet as the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Whoever man ijtama'at, hadihi al umur, then this person he is indeed truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he went on to say, This is indeed something which is easy to say on your tongue. But it is very, very difficult. Subhanallah. He said, It is one of the most difficult things when it comes to the application and applying these statements. وَلَا سِيَمَا إِذَا مَا إِذَا كَانَ يُخَالِفْ هَوَاء النَّفْسِ وَمُرَادِهَا And especially when it comes and this affair goes against what your nafs, what your nafs, your nafs, your desires want, then that's when it becomes more and more difficult, my dear brothers and sisters. It is not as easy as saying, رَضِيْتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّنِ Rather, this is something that has to be applied within our actions. Are you pleased, my dear brothers and sisters, with Islam as a religion? You find a lot of us, we shy away from practicing Islam. You say to someone, brother, why do you shave your beard? Why do you not keep the beard? This is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I don't want to be seen as someone who leaves a beard because this is from the Sha'id, this is from the, from the acts of the Muslims. I want to fit in with the current environment that we're living in. You find a sister, you say to sister, why do you not wear the hijab? It is the modern day that we're living in. If I wear the hijab, how are people going to look at me? They will see me as a Muslim. And I don't want to be someone who is odd out of everyone else. You say to the brother, brother, that the clothing of a Muslim it has to be above the ankles. Brother, this is backwards. We are in a day and age, the 21st century. The question is, has that person, he is pleased with Allah as his Lord, and his Islam as his religion? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Today I perfected your religion. 
What was religion at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? a religion that we have to practice now, my dear brothers and sisters. Whoever comes with anything other than that, then this person is deluded. So we need to hold on to my, our religion, my dear brothers and sisters, because in this is success for the person who wants to meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. If you want to fall into the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said, Ana zaimu, I promise that I will take him by his hand and enter him into Jannah. We have to practice. Islam has to be apparent on our limbs. Islam has to be apparent in our household. You enter into our household nowadays, Wallahi, you do not recognize Islam in our house. Music, all sorts of entertainment. This person, is that person pleased with Islam as his religion? So this is a question I want to ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, to sit down with yourself and ask yourself, Am I pleased with Islam as my religion? Am I willing to implement Islam or not? And why do I say this? Because of that which I'm going to mention today, insha'Allah ta'ala khutbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in His book, He says, فِي بُيُوتٍ أَذِنَ اللَّهُ أَن تُرْفَعْ وَيُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُ يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ فِيهَا بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ In the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which he has allowed for his name to be mentioned, Yusabbihullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is glorified in the morning and the evening. These houses, my dear brothers, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he speaks about the house, and turfa ma'na al hisiyya wal ma'nawiyya. This has a meaning of <coughs> the apparent meaning, these houses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about are the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the masajid. I want you to ask yourself, as we go through these ahkam or these issues, and ask yourself, are you pleased to implement these issues when it comes to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? Or do you find a dhiq fi sadriq? Do you find a difficulty when it comes to implementing these things when it comes to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you pleased with that which has come from the hadith and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and that which has come in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When Allah commands you, how are you supposed to behave when it comes to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is something that we have to put on our mizan of asking ourselves and then you will, you will be able to decide where you fall in with regards to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فِي بُيُوتٍ أَذِنَ اللَّهُ أَن تُرُفَعَ In the houses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded that He is elevated, His name is mentioned and He is glorified day and night. Because why? The houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a specific hasais, they have specific virtues that we have to observe as Muslims. Al-Rafra, this elevation of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ma'nawiyya or the hissiyya, the meaning is to elevate, we have built the masajid, we have looked after them, we clean them, and we raise money to build these masajid, but there's also a ma'nawiyya, the meaning which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to observe the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says, ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ The one who observes the sha'a'id, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he respects the house of Allah, then it is a sign of the taqwa they have within their heart. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ حُرُمَاتِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ Whoever observes the hurumat, the hudud, the guidance which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed when it comes to his rulings, then فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ This is good for him with his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he's going to find a huge reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the most important things, my dear brothers, when it comes to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا The masajid, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they belong to Allah. فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا No one is allowed to worship anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this house. So the masajids are أَضَافَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِلَيْهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has taken it back to him. They belong to him. Meaning, no one owns a masjid. No one has the name written to have any sort of ownership of the masjid because they are the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
to ever establish a masjid, to gather a community from his community, or to gather a race or any sort of culture, then this person is maghroor. This person is deluded. Because he has nothing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The masjid is a house where everyone is welcome to come and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا It is not a premise, it is not a place where we gather tribes, we gather this lineage, we gather this, rather we all gather. As you can see, my dear brothers around you, we're all from different backgrounds, we're all from different nations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, He has created all of us. Allah has created us into different cultures and tribes. So you can know each other and get together to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ummah is one. The ummah is one, regardless of where you come from, regardless of what background, regardless of what color. And I am your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so worship me. So we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So any person who thinks that I cannot go to this masjid because that masjid is a masjid of such and such, culture or such and such, then this person should change his mentality because the message should not be recognized as a message of such and such individual. Rather, it's the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> from the hakam, from the rulings when it comes to the masjid, is my dear brothers, it is mashru, it is something which is legislated that when a person comes into the masjid, they have to pay two raka'at before they sit down. The Prophet he said, إِذَا دَخَلْ إِذَا دَخَلَ أَحَدُكُمْ when the person, if every single one of you enters the masjid, فَلَا يَجْلِسْ حَتَّى يُصَلِّ رَكَعَتَيْنِ He should not sit down until he prays to rakaat. And this does not matter if you came in when the khutbah is going on, if the imam is standing up on the mimba. The Prophet ﷺ, one person came into the masjid and was giving a khutbah, and he sat down, the Prophet ﷺ, he stopped the khutbah, he said to him, have you prayed to rakaat? He said, no. He said, قُمْ فصل. Stand up and pray. So this is from the haqq, from the rights of the masjid, when a person comes into the masjid, even during the times when it's not allowed for you to pray, you stand up and you pray to raka'at. You until, rather than coming to the masjid and sitting down. طيب. The other important aspect, my dear brothers, when it comes to the masjid, is that the masjid, we have to observe it. We have to look after the masjid. Looking after the masjid, my dear brothers, requires Cleaning the masjid, treating the masjid as a place like your home, or even better, because this is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A way you would not like to treat your own home. Why do you treat the masjid in such a manner? You go into the wudu area, you go into the front of the masjid, rubbish, and things are dashed into the masjid, and the person does, la yubalun, he doesn't care. And he would not do this on the street or in his own house. This is so adab this is lack of manners and morals with regards to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person has to take care of the masjid, my dear brothers. Don't think the masjid has to be looked after by the caretaker of the masjid or the people who are in management. Rather, it is our own responsibility to look after the masjid and observe it because this is khayrul lahu inda rabbi. This is good for the person with his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the other things that are important, my dear brothers, when it comes to the masjid, is that a person, it is not permissible for him to harm the people that come to the masjid. And this is, fi had al bab my dear brothers and sisters, we have fallen short when it comes to harming others in the masjid. It is not permissible for our sisters, my dear sisters, to come in the masjid and you're wearing perfume. You have wore perfume on your clothes, this is harming the people in the masjid. You might think, that I am adorning myself. Rather, this is harming the people in the masjid because the Prophet ﷺ, he forbade a woman to come out from the house and to go into the masjid or anywhere else when she's mutatayyibah, when she has perfumed herself. Because this is a great prohibition for our sisters. As for the brothers, then this is something which is mashru to perfume yourself and look after yourself, to adorn yourself when you come into the masjid. Be in the best of Hey, uh, being in the best of presentations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya, ya bani Adam, khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. All sons of Adam, 
Wear the best of your adornments when you come to the masjid. If you don't wear the best of your adornments, you're going to come in your work clothes. Some of us, we do different types of work. Maybe requires us to get ourselves dirty. A person, methodon, he works in some sort of a trade which he's full of dirt. He comes to the masjid and he stands next to the brother. Or he stands next to someone. Well, you there and he harms him. Because of him not coming to the masjid when he's adorned himself properly. Have something that you take with you, my dear brothers. That you use it as something that you take to the masjid with you. These are things that we don't want to speak about, but it's important for all of us. Because when you're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, he turns his face and he looks at you. How would you want Allah to look at you? <clears throat> How would you present yourself if you're going to stand in front of a queen or a king? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbul samawati wal ard. The Lord of the heavens and the earth, he turns his face and he looks at you. And you're in a state which is not in a most appropriate manner. So you're harming others. When you come into the masjid, and the other thing, my dear brothers, when it comes to harming others, when it comes to the masjid, my dear brothers and sisters, and this is something which is very, very common, is the kadam, the speech. You find a lot of us, you come to the masjid and you engage in a lot of speech and kadam to the extent that the person who came to pray, he doesn't understand if he came to the marketplace or a masjid. Subhanallah. A person comes and he prays and he doesn't have khushu because of the person who's sitting around him. He wants to engage in worldly affairs. The Prophet ﷺ, he came and he had the companions. And they were shouting, they were raising their voices. In the masjid he says, Kullukum rabbakum. Every single one of you is calling out to the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't let any one of you raise their voices over the other. If a person is prohibited from reciting the Qur'an in a loud manner when the person is standing next to him or sitting next to him praying he's not allowed to do that because why? he's going to take away his khushur if this is with the Qur'an then what about the person who's talking about the dunya? what about the person who came in and he's on the phone, my dear brothers someone is praying next to him and he doesn't even realize that this person is standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are from the worst of affairs, my dear brothers. That to extend that people are driven away from the masjid because he cannot come into the masjid and find peace. The masjid is supposed to be a place of sakin and tranquility. Where a person comes and he worships his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says, We're not allowed to worship anything else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning we should not be engaging in things which are not linked to the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not saying you cannot speak about the dunya affairs or you cannot have a conversation. But a person should be intellect, should have to use the intellect. God says, if you feel like this, you know, the prayer hall, the masjid, you know, there's people praying and it's going to be an inconvenience, leave the premise and go outside or leave or find somewhere where you can speak. Because the Prophet sallallahu says in a hadith of dhulumat, of dhul, Thalatha. Oppression is of three types. The one of the oppressions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to forgive is the oppression that happens between the ibad, between the humans. What more oppression can there can be when you oppress someone when it comes to his ibadah? Who is more oppressive than the person who prevents someone to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his house? You become a reason of someone leaving a masjid or being away from this such and such a masjid because the people they do not observe the rights of the masjid. Everyone is talking. So this is something that we have to observe, my dear brothers and sisters. Not just the brothers and also the sisters. We have to observe the masjid, my dear brothers, and we have to give it its rights from the ways of oppressing or harming others in the masjid, my dear brothers, is our phones that we use. A person comes into the salah and he does not switch his phone off and the phone goes off and everyone his khushu they're gone. <coughs> the khushu, your tranquility, your awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gone. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Anas ibn Manik, he says, Man akala min hadihi shajratul khabitha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever eats from this tree, 
then he should not come to our musallah, he should not come to the masjid. In reference of the person who eats garlic, the person who eats garlic and this causes harm because of the smell that comes up from his mouth, the Prophet ﷺ, he said he should not come to the masjid. Because one is going to harm the people that he's standing next to. And he's going to harm the angels. If this is harming the person next to you, what about the kind of person who uses the phone and the phone goes off? He's not just harming the neighbor next to him, he's harming the whole masjid. Their khushu is gone. How are you going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the son of these individuals? الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. My dear respected brothers, the masjid is something يحترم. It is it is a place that has to be honored. It is a place that has to be respected. It is a place that has a huge position in the hearts of the Muslims. The Prophet Sallam, the first thing that he established when he moved into Al Madina, when he migrated to Al Madina, he used to establish the masjid. Because the, fair, the affairs of the Muslim, the affairs of the Jama'ah, the community, are within the masjid. The person comes and he prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't know what brought him from the outside. He's looking for his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he wants to find sakina, he wants to find tranquility with his Lord. We need to honor these places and make it a means of someone who comes and finds that tranquility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He speaks about the haramain. He speaks about the haram. He says, وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ آمِنًا Whoever enters it, he is safe. This should be the masjid. A person enters into the masjid, he should be safe from the harms of others. He should be safe from anything that is going to take him away. He's left the dunya behind him, he's come to the masjid. He wants to call out to his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers, from the, from the ahkam, from the rulings pertaining to the masjid that we have to observe when it comes to Salatul Jum'ah, and this we can speak for a long time. When it comes to Salatul Jum'ah, a person should be someone who observes the ahkam when it comes to observing Salatul Jum'ah. He should not be using his phone, he should not be speaking to the person next to them. And a person should be haris on coming closer and coming early to the masjid in order to gain the reward of being in the first sufu. A person should not come in and stay outside or stay downstairs and miss out the reward of being in the first world. Because the Prophet says in the hadith of Abu Hurairah, if the people knew the reward of coming and, st- and praying in the first saf, they would fight for it even if they, if they had to draw lots. So they can gain this reward of being in the first, in the first world. They find someone, he stands outside, he came in early, he stands outside and he's on the phone. Or he sits downstairs, when the khutbah starts, then he rushes. And he's, he's from the last of the people, he sprays outside or even at the entrance, because he wants to leave early. SubhanAllah. This is our hal, my dear brothers. And also on this, on this point, my dear brothers, with regards to the masjid, it is not permissible for a person to observe or to reserve a place in any part of the masjid. And this is something that you find a lot, someone observes or he reserves a place in the first saf. He's outside and he wants his, his place to be reserved. This is something which is haram. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, whoever races and he finds a place for him which other person did not find, meaning he found a place to pray in, and the other person did not find it, then then he has more right to it. He has more right to meaning the place he has to be in it with his body. He cannot put something there and then go outside and do whatever he wants and then he comes back hoping that he's going to find the same place. No, this is something which is impermissible. It is not permissible for a person to do this, my dear brothers. Rather, a person should take time and sit in that place. La mani, there's no problem for someone to put something there and goes, you know, to help himself for a hajjah or to go to do something for a small period of time and he comes back, then he has more right to it. But someone who leaves for a great period of time, for a lengthy period of time and he hopes that he's going to come back, then this person, he has committed a mistake. 
You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to that which is correct. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who observe the rights of the masjid. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, you know, to make it as a means, to make these messages as a means of for us gathering together and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner which is befitting. اللهم إن اللهم إن نسألك الهدى والتقى اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها صل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين سبحانك اللهم الحمد لله إنها إنا أنت صادق أتوب إليك وأقم الصلاة